It's no secret that I'm an absolutely huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I kind of have a whole YouTube channel about it and it's sort of my career at this point. But something I've been thinking about a lot recently is how much of this whole Yu-Gi-Oh lifestyle and career I owe to my parents. Like seriously, when you think about the different things that you liked and took interest in as a kid, these things really like define a lot of our lives. And so I'm really grateful that Yu-Gi-Oh, along with my many other hobbies, my parents took interest in and let me kind of learn more about and they just sort of helped and supported along the way. For instance, I got into Yu-Gi-Oh by watching the TV show, but I wasn't able to get a starter deck or any packs immediately. I actually only got them because we were at a Books A Million one day. It's a bookstore, apparently not everybody knows about that because Books A Millions aren't everywhere as I've been informed. But we were at a Books A Million because my sister liked reading and so they would take us to Books A Million every now and again. It was like 30 minutes away from home, so kind of a long drive, but they made it happen. And so anyway, while we were at Books A Million and actually about to leave for the evening, we spotted Starter Deck Yugi and Starter Deck Kaiba on the shelf. My mind was absolutely blown, both of ours really, because we both watched Yu-Gi-Oh. It was kind of insane, right? Like, you know, this show that you've seen after school sometimes, but the characters are on the box. It was back when they did the, the card windows, like on the cutouts in the box or whatever, so you could see like the dark magician, you could see the blue eyes. And so we begged, absolutely begged for these, for these starter decks. And we did actually finally get them. I remember opening up for the first time. I remember feeling how like weird it was. The cards were actually like smaller in person than they were on the show. I remember being surprised at how like they actually had like text boxes and they didn't have the kind of just attack and defense point values that they have on TV. But either way, that's how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! And from there, it was just kind of a fever dream. Uh, I could talk about, you know, getting packs and building decks and things like that, but I thought it would be more fun to share some of the weird uh, stories and misadventures that I've had with Yu-Gi-Oh! instead. So uh, I think the first really funny one was getting my blue eyes white dragon taken away when I was in the second grade. So, seven-year-old Paul obviously really liked Yu-Gi-Oh! and a lot of kids at school liked it at the time. This was that period of time in Yu-Gi-Oh! where it was kind of just like, you know, a pop culture phenomenon. Every kid at least watched the show and knew about it. Lots of us collected cards and built decks and, you know, we'd like to play and bring our cards to school and everything. Well, uh, my school had a rule, which most schools do, I imagine, where you weren't allowed to like bring games and stuff to school, anything that wasn't school related. So you couldn't bring your Game Boy and your Pokemon games, you couldn't bring your, your Yu-Gi-Oh cards or anything like that, or your action figures. Um, but seven-year-old Paul didn't know this, or maybe he just didn't care about this. Because uh, since everyone at school talked about Yu-Gi-Oh, there was this other kid who didn't believe me when I said I had a second Blue Eyes White Dragon. Because a lot of kids had gotten like started at Kaiba, and so I obviously had my started at Kaiba Blue Eyes, but I'd actually been really lucky and managed to pull a second Blue Eyes from an LOB pack. And this is absolutely huge because the LOB pack Blue Eyes had a different artwork than the normal pack Blue Eyes. You guys know all about this. He didn't believe me when I said I had it. I was like, yeah, I have a second Blue Eyes White Dragon and it looks different than Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon. And he didn't believe me. He basically was like, no, I don't buy it. There aren't more than like three Blue Eyes in the world apparently. And so I was like, nope, I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna bring this Blue Eyes to school tomorrow and you'll see. And so, fast forward to the next day and I brought my Blue Eyes White Dragon with me. In fact, I brought all my cards, I think, or at least like my whole deck. And um, I couldn't wait till recess. So I show this kid the Blue Eyes White Dragon while we're, not like while the teacher was teaching, but like while we were doing maybe like worksheets or like silent reading or just something like that. And so I pull out the Blue Eyes and I'm like, hey, like I kind of, you know, nudge him, show him the Blue Eyes White Dragon. This idiot exclaims loudly, Oh, what? For real? You have a blue eyes white dragon? And then, ugh, I was so upset. Teacher over here is, she walks over, we'll call her Mrs. Mrs. G. Yeah, we'll call her Mrs. G. And so she overhears this, she walks over, she is like wondering what we're doing, sees the card, confiscates it. I was absolutely distraught. Like, I was very close to actually crying in the middle of class because if you guys, you guys know how kids are and like Yu-Gi-Oh cards it just I, I was literally dying I was like I was so mad why couldn't I just wait till recess to just show this card I waited until the end of the day which was agonizing by the way that was like six more hours of just waiting through class and stuff like that and at the end of the day when we're all like getting ready to go home um we had to like stand outside kind of on these like bleachers when our parents would come to pick us up and everything like that and so um she was on duty for that and I asked her can I have my blue eyes white dragon back 
which in hindsight sounds so stupid to call it like my blue eyes white dragon as if she would really know what that is but um yeah and so she doesn't know what that is she's like what are you talking about you're what and i was like you know my blue eyes white dragon it's like the rarest Yu-Gi-Oh card again she has no clue what this means and she's just like yeah i don't think i have it like i mean i don't know what happened to it and i'm just like you freaking took it and put it in your desk. Of course you know what it is. You remember taking it, but because, you know, I am a kid and you know how it is when you're a kid, you can't really like explain your case and you can't accuse the teacher of lying. So I never got that blue eyes white dragon back. I just, I just never did. I was afraid to tell my parents that I'd gotten it confiscated because they knew I wasn't supposed to bring stuff to school. And that blue eyes white dragon is gone forever. It's still in her desk maybe to this day. I mean, obviously not, but you know, I still have this like inkling feeling that maybe she actually knew what it was and she just gave it to like her son or something. I have nothing to really back that up. Moral of the story was don't bring your Yu-Gi-Oh cards to school. And I didn't for like at least, you know, a year or so. There's also a time when I bought a fake Egyptian God card. So um, backtrack a bit to Books A Million. Books A Million held Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments every week. They actually had like a whole league going on. It's crazy that this stuff doesn't happen anymore. But yeah, they had Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. They had them on like Saturdays and I think also something on Sundays. They had like traditional format. They had advanced format. They had like formats just for kids and all this different stuff. And I think it was like a Konami sort of whatever the OTS equivalent at the time would have been. Like they had that. Like it was an officially sort of licensed thing. And so my mom would take me to Books A Million as many Saturdays as she could, which again, very grateful to her for. Thank you, mom. Um, and so I would play tournaments. I was not very good at it. I didn't really know the rules. I'd usually just play with other kids. We would literally just be like sitting on the floor just playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It was great. They even had tag tournaments sometimes, which, oh, good times. Either way though, so one day close to closing, this one older kid shows up. I guess he's like a teenager or something. And he's like, yeah, guys. I have Egyptian God cards for sale. And if you guys know how Yu-Gi-Oh was at that period of time with like Battle City airing on TV and like the Egyptian God cards, like what are they gonna be? Who's got them? What do they do? Yeah, you can imagine an Egyptian God card was a really big pull. And so this guy says he has a Winged Dragon of Ra. And also I think he had like an album with the Tormentor that he was like selling earlier that day. But yeah, he has a Winged Dragon of Ron. He's like, I'll sell it to you. He's selling them for $10. And he told me he would sell it to me for just $7. So I go to my mom and I absolutely beg. We're about to leave the store and I'm just like, mom, please. Like he's got an addition God card. He's got a Winged Dragon of Ron. Like, please, can I please have it? And um, I should probably say, we, you know, did not have a lot of money growing up. I got Yu-Gi-Oh packs like once in a blue moon. Most of the cards I got were just like from trading with other kids and things like that. So just kind of even asking for $7 was like kind of a big ask at the time. And so um, she eventually like caved and was like, okay, well, fine, you can get this card. I go inside the store and, or I go like back inside the store because I was like begging outside in the car. And it turns out the guy actually had gotten kicked out and like gotten in trouble from Books A Million for selling people fake cards. And so uh, I was so grateful, I guess. Well, like I was, first of all, as a kid, my first reaction is I'm sad. I didn't get a, you know, like, oh no, I missed out on the, you know, Winged Dragon of Raw. I didn't really realize, yeah, like he was scamming. These were fake cards. I should be very glad that I didn't get to have one. I remember getting back in the car and telling my parents about this and they were like, yeah, you know, of course you shouldn't have trusted this, thank goodness. Um, but just looking back, it was like a really funny, weird story. Fake cards were pretty popular. I remember like other kids in school having fake cards. Some kid had like an entire bag of fake cards that like his parents or something had gotten from a, from a flea market or a garage sale or something. There's also a story about a water park that I went to. I don't remember what this water park was called. It was like Watertown maybe or something like that. And they were holding a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament that they had advertised for kids to show up and you bring your deck and you play, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh and you get prizes. You can probably already see where this is going. A Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at a water park, probably a bad idea. Yeah, so I, of course, was super excited about this. It was like 30, 40 minutes away, but my parents, who I'm always so grateful for, uh, for, you know, indulging my Yu-Gi-Oh interest, they took me to this water park and it was a lot of fun. Like you have a bunch of like seven, eight year old kids. You're having a blast at the water park, you know, you can go swim and you can duel or whatever. And so the way they had like the, this dueling setup was, it was like kind of under this like tent gazebo sort of setup that they had. Um, and it was like pretty far away from the pool, right? Like from all the different pools and water rides and attractions. Um, and it was really neat because you actually got a free card just for entering the tournament. The tournament itself was like 
free, I think. And then you just got like a card. So it was like from the stack of cards. I was like, oh, am I gonna get like a, an Egyptian God card maybe? Um, I think the card that I got was like literally some, like a, a bubonic vermin or whatever it was, some trash from like Metal Raiders or whatever. I was very disappointed, but also, this is another time where I very narrowly, very narrowly avoided disaster because water park, Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, there was like some kid shows up and he's like sopping wet and ends up tripping and falling and falling on the table and water gets like all over a bunch of different people's cards and it's the table like two tables kind of away from where I am and I was so grateful because by the way we were all kids at the time so most of us didn't really have card sleeves not that card sleeves would even have helped that much but a bunch of people's stuff got absolutely soaked and then like some other thing got knocked over and it was like full of water or drinks or something and like ice and so it's just complete and utter disaster never again would I go to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at a water park a little bit like I think it was like a one-time thing anyway but I'm glad that I avoided that absolute disaster fee because really who ever thought it was a good idea to have a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at a water park okay last one for this video is actually about the crush card virus that I pulled so this is like kind of a story that was sort of in the future. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was like seven, eight, whatever, kind of got out of it after a couple of years, which many kids do, totally normal. I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! though in the seventh grade, I want to say, seventh or eighth grade. And this was also around the time that Crush Guard Virus had just gotten announced as a reprint in the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! Gold series. Just a little bit of background on Crush Guard Virus, it was a Shonen Jump prize card worth like a thousand plus dollars. It was used in the Dark Armed Return deck at the time. Super huge deal. Um, and I didn't really want Crush Guard Virus because it was like a good card used in tournaments. I wanted it because Kaiba had it. And I was like, okay, cool. I remember him using this in the anime. How do I get a Crush Guard Virus for myself? And so I remember reading Beckett Yu-Gi-Oh! Magazine, which you guys, if you're like an OG, you'll know all about Beckett Magazine. It was this unofficial Yu-Gi-Oh! Magazine that just kind of told you about all the newest stuff happening with packs and card prices and anime stuff and just the whole thing. They would do like giveaways and sweepstakes. I read Beckett Magazine all the time at Books A Million. And as fate would have it, Books A Million is where I, um, read about the gold series thing because there wasn't really like widespread internet at the time or i mean there was i didn't have internet i was a poor kid um so i read about the um, new like gold series pack coming out in this beckett magazine they were like yeah you can even pull like the you know highly sought after crush card virus and it's worth you know 300 dollars or something like that that they said i was like oh man that would be so cool and so actually at that same books a million that same day after reading this I found some packs of gold series, like the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! Gold series. I think this is 2009, eight or nine. And so I got one pack of gold series with my own money for a change. I was old enough to at least have gotten you know, more of an allowance. I got it, I opened the packs. I think it only came with like two or three packs and I pulled a crush card virus. I think in like the very first pack, like a gold rare crush card virus mind blown like this is huge this is absolutely huge this i never sold like a Yu-Gi-Oh card before i didn't really know that they had like monetary value in that way until i'd read about it and so actually me like me pulled a crush card virus i was over the moon and it's so much so that i actually like made a, i got my mom to help me make an ebay account and sell this crush card virus online because i didn't really know anywhere that i could like sell it locally so i actually sold it online made an eBay account, um, got the money from the eBay transaction, which, you know, like eBay took some part of the fee and I ended up getting $250. And that, uh, my good friends, A, first of all, if you're a kid and you're like the seventh grade and you suddenly get like $250, $260, you're rich, basically, right? Like, you know, it kind of feels that way. But that money actually went towards A, more Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and B, my very first camera that I owned. I don't remember what camera it was. It was like one of those cameras where it like had like a flip out little USB dongle. That was the first camera that I got. And actually that sort of got me into making Yu-Gi-Oh videos like today at all. And ironically, the first thing that I wanted to make was like pack opening videos. But then it dawned on me that I didn't actually have enough money to actually like regularly buy packs and make videos about it. So that didn't exactly pan out. But basically it kind of feels like this weird poetic justice, you know, coming full circle thing. I got my first Yu-Gi-Oh cards at a Books A Million. I pulled my first like make it big sort of Yu-Gi-Oh card at a Books A Million. It's what got me the camera that started my YouTube channel. And now like 15 years later, 
here I am telling you guys about it. Uh, so yeah, long story short, be grateful for your parents if they did allow you to like explore your interests and support them. My parents certainly did, and I'm really glad that they did. I didn't get lots of Yu-Gi-Oh packs, like I said, but I was able to, you know, meet lots of people, go to tournaments, learn things. I got to see the Yu-Gi-Oh movie. I got to eventually go to card shops, um, all kinds of things. And that's why I'm here to be able to talk to you guys about it today. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, you guys can let me know down in the comments if you have any other, like, Yu-Gi-Oh stories for you. Like, what was, how did you get into Yu-Gi-Oh? Did your parents help you with it? What were the weird misadventures and mishaps and stuff like that? I'd love to hear about all of them. Uh, okay, anyways, I've gone on long enough. Hopefully you guys liked the video and let me know if I should make more things like this because I'm kind of in the middle of a move right now so my living situation isn't exactly stable but I knew I needed to make some sort of content to get out to you all. So yeah, this is it. Okay, cool. I will see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.